What's up, you guys? Coach Little Joe here, and I have a very interesting topic to start talking about with you guys. You know, I've been thinking the last like uh, couple weeks because I was kind of running out of uh, you know kind of ideas and like things I wanted to keep discussing. Sorry, camera's a little sideways there. So I was running, you know, I was feeling like I was running out of ideas and things I wanted to discuss because, you know, I had kind of compared some, you know, different PDs like Primo, Masteron, Anavar, Winstrol, uh, sorry, Anavar, Winstrol, Anadrol, Test Suspension, and a few others. Um, and so I was kind of like, you know, well, what are some other good comparisons I can, you know, discuss for you guys that are, you know, relatable and useful for people, especially if they don't really know much about uh, PEDs, you know, and I see a lot of different things these days with people like, you know, they make claims about certain new co new things that come out that it's like, oh, it's better than, you know, steroids or it's better than, you know, this, it's better than that, blah, 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 blah. And a lot of those claims I find are very false and there's not a lot of real evidence, you know, backing that, you know, especially when things like anabolic steroids, especially testosterone, you know, synthetic version of testosterone has been around for what, like, talking like almost 100 years, like, maybe not quite 100 years, but like, you know, it's been around for a long ass time. And it's something that, you know, they developed a long time ago, and there's been lots of studies on it, lots of tests done on it, and like proving how effective it is, you know, in regards to like raising someone's testosterone levels, increasing the ability for them to build muscle mass, um, increasing their recovery, increasing their strength, increasing their libido, increasing their energy levels, just like so many, you know, beneficial things, and you don't even need that much of it, really, like, just bringing your, you know, testosterone levels and do, like, a high normal range um, with TRT can show you substantial uh, improvements in all of those things, and I have clients that have done that, you know, just on TRT, not doing cycles, just TRT, and they've seen crazy results in, like, even a six-month time frame, and while doing so, their blood work was great, you know, their overall health and everything is great. Um, and there's nothing like in getting, being inhibited in a negative way by doing that, especially if you're doing it with, uh, you know, HCG and things like, uh, like something like that to like ensure that you still have the fertility ability if you're looking to have kids. Um, so what I wanted to discuss based on that is comparing steroids to SARMs. Now, this episode, I'm focusing on Rad 140 versus testosterone. The reason I picked those ones to start is because I've heard this a lot lately about people talking about how Rad 140 is better than testosterone or it's going to increase your, you know, all this by much more than testosterone and all this in between. Now, I've used Rad 140 personally just once. And from my experience, what I did though, it wasn't really a very good experiment because I did it when I was already using testosterone and growth hormone um, in an off season. And so I just added it in because I had heard that like, oh, if you add it in, you know, it could be something that could help you get more out of your cycle or more out of your testosterone kind of thing. Like, um, so I was just like, okay, like let's, that's like, I didn't really research it. I was like, probably, this is probably, uh, you know, six, seven years ago. So I was just like, all right, I'll try it. And honestly, like I noticed initially, like I saw my strength went up a bit, but the biggest thing I noticed was it's like after a few days of doing it, my appetite went way down, way down. And when it comes to trying to build muscle, anybody who's done that or attempted to do that knows that you got to eat quite a bit of food, especially when you're trying to really bulk up. And when you can't really eat as much because you just feel like you have no appetite and you feel almost like nauseous, you know, and the only other thing I ever found that really killed my appetite like that was Anadrol, except at least with Anadrol, I noticed some crazy, you know, improvements in like muscle fullness and strength using that versus like the, the Rad 140. I did not notice that. Like, I think I lasted it, like taking it for about three three weeks and then I just like caught it cut it out completely and my appetite shot back up and uh it was you know more beneficial from there just not having it in play um so from my own experience I didn't really see a benefit especially not compared to testosterone now a lot of the claims are that like oh you can get more 
you know, bang for your buck with this, but I'm like, not really, because, you know, they're comparing, like, taking 20 milligrams of Rad 40, Rad 140 a day to, like, the equivalent of, like, 300 milligrams of testosterone a week, but it's like, okay, now let's just, you know, let's see that. Okay, so let's say you take 20 milligrams of Rad 140 a week, but your appetite shit, but it helps you get a bit stronger recovery-wise, you know, it's going to help you with some, you know, picking the right receptors as they claim it just like binds to the right receptors to build muscle in a sense um or binds to like certain androgen receptors to build muscle and like the claims on it are kind of ridiculous in that sense because i'm like oh it just picks these receptors whatever that's what it's that's like what i've read on it um it sounds kind of ridiculous the way they word it but um really what it comes down to is just like okay it's not as strong as, and they claim, they say this in like when they, like in all the different research that I read about it, it's like, they're like, it's not as strong or as bad as like taking in like an oral steroid, but they also try and claim that it's stronger than testosterone. It's like, okay, in a sense, like I'm sure it might be similar to like doing TRT, the strength you'd get from it in regards to like how, you know, much results you're going to get, I would say, or it might be even a little bit better than TRT. But when we're talking about doing something you can do year round and stay healthy and continue to sustain that development. There's no way you could convince me that rad 140 is better than taking testosterone. Like there's no way because I know just from the fact that it's an oral, you know, SARM steroid, whatever, you know, it's passing through your liver more. You're going to be having more liver toxicity from that. And it's something you can only take for like at the most, like a couple months at a time. Right. And like put the appetite stuff aside, you can only do it for a couple months and you got to take a couple months off. Right. Take TRT. You can do that year round and you could take TRT. And then if you wanted to scale up and do a cycle a little bit higher, as long as blood work and everything is good. Right. So I think you'd get more out of taking a little bit more testosterone into like, you know, like the 400 milligram week range rather than like taking rad 140 cycles running off because you have to take breaks and it's going to impact your liver more. So it's inevitably going to be more toxic on your body than taking some testosterone. So like the logic behind them trying to say that it's better is like, sure in the short term, you might see a little bit more of an impact because it's oral, it kicks in faster, but long-term we're talking like a full year. I guarantee you, you're going to see more actually, let's say like equivalent benefit in regards to like muscle building, strength, recovery, etc. But you'll see more of a benefit in regards to staying healthy and keeping everything, all your blood work healthy, keeping all your, the markers that you're checking healthy, like liver, kidneys, etc. Like all that, I guarantee you is staying a lot better and a lot better ranges and a lot healthier. And you're going to feel a lot healthier than if you take something like that on and off year round. And I know this just from experience because like anytime I've done TRT versus doing a cycle, especially when there's orals involved it, uh, you don't feel as good. You feel shittier. Like taking stuff that's processing through your liver like that, oral steroids that are strong, you know, something like an anadrol or a halo testin or, you know, things like that, that are very toxic on your liver. Um, it doesn't, uh, sorry, my car's beeping at me because it shuts off if I don't drive after a certain amount of time. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, when you're taking any type of oral, you know, steroid, SARM, whatever it is, like, there's more liver toxicity involved in general, right? Like, it's not, uh, it's not something you can, you know, take for a long period of time. So, when you're talking about maximizing your progress over a long period of time, testosterone is the way to go 10 out of 10 times. You know, you can never convince me that there's going to be something like safer to use and something you can use long term than taking testosterone because it's something your body actually produces and you're literally just like supplementing what your body actually produces you know the same hormone that your body produces so like that seems a lot safer and a lot more effective than trying to add in exogenous things like rad 140 um so results wise like i've never seen anybody have this crazy transformation rad 140 but i've seen people like triple their testosterone levels, <laughs> you know, going from something they're at like, you know, six moles a week or whatever. And then they get up to like 29 at the 28, 29, like the like end of the friggin', um, physiological range for a male. And the difference is insane, man. Like, could you imagine like four times the amount of testosterone is going to be way more effective than being like, Hey, I'm going to take 20 milligrams of rad 40 every day. 
Um, and like the thing is, is like, that's still in a physiological range, which is healthy. So it's like, yeah, you'll never convince me rad 140 is better. I don't know, but that's just my two cents on it, you know, because like when it comes down to it, both of them are going to improve muscularity. Both of them are going to improve strength. Both of them are going to improve recovery. Um, testosterone is definitely going to improve your libido, which is another strong benefit compared to rad 140, which I don't think has any impact on libido. And then along with that testosterone, if anything is going to enhance your appetite versus rad 140 is going to decrease your appetite. So when it comes to the muscle building aspect and building more strength, you're going to be able to eat a lot more quality nutrition when you have the appetite versus you don't have the appetite. So that's going to lead to more muscle growth, more strength gains and so on. Right. So because that factor right there tells me that long term, you're going to see better results from the testosterone and less side effects with, you know, health markers and things like that. And being able to do this consistently year round, you know, especially if you're doing a TRT range. So if you're doing a TRT range, totally safe to be doing that year round and rad 140, not safe to do year round. So you got to be able to pick and choose what's more important to you and what your long-term goal is. And then apply that to what you're, you know, choosing to implement into whether it's a cycle or whether it's something you want to do consistently for a long period of time, like TRT, and then kind of deciding what's going to work best for you. Okay. Um, now when it comes to these two, like I said, hundred percent testosterone every day of the week, you can't convince me otherwise, because even if you tried, I would be able to pick an oral steroid that's going to give you more effects and probably more benefit and more bang for your buck and probably the same level of toxicity on the body. So that's that. <laughs> but yeah, that's, uh, that's my first comparison of two, you know, between a SARM and a steroid like testosterone. And yeah, that's, uh, that's basically my summary of what I believe is the most effective one. Obviously testosterone is hands down the best option in my opinion. And rad 140 is something where, you know, if you wanted to give it a try, I'd say, you know, be smart about it. Start with a low dose, like 20 milligrams a day um, would be plenty. But you got to keep in mind, this is something that can impact your appetite negatively. And it obviously is going to impact your liver. And along with that, you got to, you know, think about your long term goals. And it's like, is this really the most effective thing I'm going to be taking to do this? And if it isn't, then, you know, you should reassess and then figure out what something could be, you know, more useful for your goals. Okay. If you guys like this video and you want to continue to me, me to continue to do more, make sure you give it a thumbs up and feel free to leave a comment of, you know, what you think about this video or something you'd like to see next. And of course, if you guys haven't had the chance to subscribe yet, make sure you hit that red button and subscribe now. Take care.